In lesson uh, 5.4, we learned how to find the derivative of exponential functions like e to the x or e to the x squared. And lesson 5.5 takes a look at the derivatives of logarithmic functions. Thus, the title, what about the derivatives of logarithmic functions? So first, let's go ahead and examine the formula for finding the derivative of the natural log of absolute value of x. So this formula, straight out of your book, um, tells us that if we want to take the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x, that the derivative is 1 over x. And this formula came about in the same way that uh, that formula for exponential functions came about, that we plug the natural log of x into the definition of derivative, we take that limit as h approaches 0, and lo and behold, this is what pops out. For our course, we're not going to go through the process of proving that derivative formula with the limit, but just keep in mind that that process did take place in order for somebody to come up with this formula. Now, typically, the way we would write this is um, that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Because certainly, if the derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of x is 1 over x, then the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Keep in mind that x can't be 0 uh, because that would provide an undefined situation. In fact, the natural log function has a domain where x is greater than 0, so I think that pretty much takes care of it. So let's just start right out by doing some derivatives. The first one is simply f of t equals uh, the natural log of t, and by our formula, the derivative of f of t, f prime of t, is just going to be 1 over t. And it's about that easy. So right now we're smiling. Let's see if we can keep our smiles for the rest of the examples. Let's try a product. You can see here that I have x times the natural log of x, and so we're going to need to use our product rule. Let me give myself a little more space. So you know how we've been using the product rule. We say that the first factor is u, and we let u equal x. The derivative of u is u prime, and that equals 1. The second factor, v, is a natural log of x. We've just learned that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And now we simply apply our product rule. So f prime of x is going to be the, the first term u times the derivative of the second 1 over x. So uh, that'd be x times 1 over x plus the second term times the derivative of the first, which is natural log of x times 1. Now, notice this has a nice easy product, right? That's just 1. So the resultant uh, derivative formula is 1 plus a natural log of x. The derivative of the product, x natural log of x, is 1 plus natural log of x. Let's try a quotient. Right? We've got the natural log of x divided by the function x. We're going to need a quotient rule and a little more space. Our setup for the quotient rule usually goes something like this. We say u equals the natural log of x, that's the top, or the numerator. Uh, v is the denominator, which is x. We know u prime is 1 over x. And we know v prime is 1. So to get that derivative, f prime of x, we follow the quotient rule. It's v times u prime bottom times derivative of the top, minus u times v prime, which is the top times the derivative of the bottom, that's the log of x, over the denominator squared, v squared, so that'd be x squared. And then again, we just do a little simplification. We already know on top we're going to have a 1 minus natural log of x, and then the denominator uh, is x squared, and we can leave it at that. So far, not too bad. We can do products, we can do quotients, we can take the derivatives. 
Let's investigate compositions now and see how that works. So the chain rule, when you apply it to the natural log function, looks something like this. If you're taking the derivative of natural log of u, it's just 1 over u times u prime. Very similar, and that's a horrible arrow, but very similar to the chain rule that we've used with other functions. Let's do some more derivatives. The first family of derivatives that I wanted to look at were these linear functions here where we just have a coefficient times x. We've already shown that the derivative of the natural log of x is simply 1 over x. And that's an easy derivative for us to figure out. Let's investigate this natural log of 2x, though. Remember that we have to follow the chain rule. So in this case, it would be 1 over u, right? u is 2x, times the derivative of u, which is 2, which means we have 2 over 2x. But holy cow, the 2's cancel, and I end up with 1 over x again. Hmm. Let's try this negative 4x. That's supposed to be a negative 4x. It probably should be in parentheses. Let's see what the derivative of this is. Well, that's going to be 1 over negative 4x times negative 4. Guess what happens to the negative 4s? They cancel, and I end up with 1 over x again. What about a decimal? f prime of x is going to be 1 over 1.7x times 1.7. Again, 1 over x. f prime, in this case, is 1 over 454x times 454. Again, 1 over x. My goodness. So I hope you see that there's a pattern here. And in general, what we usually say is if f of x equals the natural log of kx, where k is any real number, that the derivative, f prime of x, is just going to be 1 over x. And what happens is when I give quizzes and tests that have these problems on it, Usually there are a few students who forget to multiply by the chain rule, and so they'll leave their answer as 1 over kx instead of 1 over x. So please be careful with that. I just did this screen to kind of point out to you that when it's just some number times x, the derivative is going to end up being 1 over x because that coefficient will cancel. Keep that in mind as you proceed. Let's look at one more interesting pattern, powers of x. So if we just do the derivative of natural log of x, you already know that's 1 over x. I'll just write it again here to get the pattern down. This time, when we do the chain rule, we'll have 1 over x squared, but we have to multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So that makes 2x over x squared when you multiply that out. This time the 2 doesn't cancel, but notice one of the x's cancels, and this ends up as 2 over x. Hmm. Let's see what happens with x cubed. The derivative is 1 over x cubed. That's supposed to be a cubed. Let me try that again. I'm going to have to erase it. It won't let me do an undo when I'm talking. I'm still getting this thing figured out and you get to be part of it. Aren't you happy? 1 over x cubed times the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, which is going to be 3x squared over x cubed. Oh my goodness, look at what happens again. We get 3 over x. Okay, let's try this with x to the negative 4. f prime of x is going to be 1 over, that's a 1 over, x to the negative 4, times the derivative of x to the negative 4, which is negative 4 x to the negative 5. And that equals negative 4 over, let's see, negative 4 x to the negative 5 
over x to the negative 4. Negative 5 minus a negative 4 is negative 1, so that still ends up on bottom, so we get negative 4 over x. Huh. Following this pattern, I think you'll agree that what we're going to get for this last problem better be 376 over x. And in fact, that is the case. So in general, and this is another one where students sometimes maybe are rushing and forget to deal with the chain rule. In general, if your function has the form x to the n, the derivative f prime of that function, f prime of x, is going to have the form n over x. Okay? Just another one of those weird patterns that happens from this derivative formula. So please be careful with that as well. Okay, so let's get down to a more standard composition problem. Here, x squared plus 1 is plugged into the natural log function. Let's go ahead and compute this derivative. I've just given myself a little more space here. Um, let's go ahead and just set up the chain rule here. In this case, u would equal x squared plus 1. And y, or f, would equal natural log of u. The derivative of u is 2x plus 0. The derivative of y is 1 over u. And so the derivative of f is going to be 1 over u times 2x. And that will look like this. f prime of x is 1 over u, which is x squared plus 1, times 2x. And then typically we write that 2x in the numerator, 2x times 1 over x squared plus 1. And so this will be a, the derivative formula for that function. One more quick example. Let's put two of the things that we've been studying over the last uh, couple lessons together. We're going to do a product rule e to the 2x times the natural log of 3x. And keep in mind that both of these are include a composition. Alright? So let's get to work on this. It's a product rule, so I'm going to get organized. u equals e to the 2x. And we know from our rules for exponential functions that the, der the derivative, excuse me, is going to be e to the 2x times 2. So I'm going to write that as e, uh, 2e to the 2x. That's because I have to follow the chain rule. Our v is, let me erase these uh, arrows. That was just to help us see that, but that won't look good if we're continuing. Let me pause while I talk to myself for a little bit. Okay, now I'm back talking to the students. Um, v is natural log of 3x, and we know that the derivative of that is... Um, 1 over x, right? We just spent a whole screen preaching at you about that. Again, be careful with that bad boy right there. Okay, let's go through the product rule. So f prime of x is u times v prime. So that's e to the 2x times 1 over x. I'm going to write that as e to the 2x over x plus 2e to the 2x times the natural, uh, natural log of 3x. And let's write that with the 2e to the 2x in front. And then times the natural log of 3x. And again, this is a pretty good form for that formula. I mean, there's ways we could probably factor out an e to the 2x or something like that, but it wouldn't really look much better. Um, I just wanted to illustrate to you that some of these functions, as they get more complicated, we can still do the derivatives if we stay organized and follow the rules that we've been studying, especially for exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So good luck with the rest of your uh, assignment, and I'm sure you'll be hearing from me again as we move forward in the chapters. Bye.